Hey YouTube, it's Chuck. So I'm just gonna run down these production hives today and do some Varroa mite checks. Um, I do Varroa mite checks using this Varroa test bottle. Uh, I have a couple different styles. Um, this style is very nice, it's available everywhere. This is a, a, a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, the advantages of this style is the cup holds the full volume of alcohol when you rinse it out or soap if you use soap. Um, the advantage of this one is the, the lid tightens better when you're shaking and doesn't leak as much, but you have to have another cup of any type to pour it into. So if you're throwing one thing in your kit, this one works a little bit better, just leak some. Uh, it works better because it, the lid is included. This one I find I need a second um, type of a cup in order to use uh, for my mite check. So anyway, I'm just gonna crack these hives open as a technique. I always find my queen before I do a, a mite check. I'm scared to death of uh, accidentally dumping a queen off in my bucket and getting her in there, especially if it's a virgin or unmarked queen I might miss. Um, if you look really, really careful, you can get away with it. Most people don't say find your queen first. Just my technique. In any case, I'm probably going to start and stop this video, show you guys how it's going, and we'll just keep you posted. We'll be right back. Ah, oh, there she is. Show her to you. Pour a cater. See if you can see her on there in the middle of the frame. Top side. Nice little Italian yellow abdomen. Gonna cage her. She's in here. And I as always say, put her to the side. So now I've trapped my queen. So the type of frame you want to shake has got a lot of brood in it. This has got a lot of pollen in it. This hive is really, really booming. It's low on stores though. See, this is a single without any extra, so I need to get some food on it. It's got a little bit but it needs some more food. So I've got my queen. So now I'm essentially looking for a nice open brood frame. Look at this brood. <laughs> Just packed in here. She is laying up a storm. Uh, and this has got both sealed and unsealed. So the way I do this is I have a bucket and I shake. Go ahead and put the frame back. Just gonna make sure you can see that in frame. I'll give you a little bit more of an angle there. Okay. So in the bucket, you've got mostly nurse bees because they were on a brood frame. Obviously, I'm not looking closely to see if they're actually nurse bees. I'm just actually assuming that because they were on the brood frame. Um, and this is my technique again. So this has got... Uh, alcohol because I'm I still have some alcohol I'll switch back to soapy when I'm done uh, and half a cup is all you need to get about 300 bees um, Queen's not in there for the goodness of the hive to determine the mite loads now while I'm shaking this for about a minute I want you to notice if you can see in here this has uh, three uh, two newer and one a little bit older of my extended release oxalic acid strips I've had success with these, just putting them in there and leaving them. I talk about it in every one of my videos because uh, Varroa mite management is the biggest issue for beekeepers to work through in the 2020s. Uh, you got to find a solution. Now, if for some reason these extended uh, release oxalic acid strips weren't adequate for this time of year, which is when Varroa are booming, I would go ahead and do an oxalic acid vapor to bang them down and then let these strips kind of be the steady state, keep the uh, mites at bay. But not even knowing, and you've been watching me shake this the full time, this is not staged, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen here. I have not had a problem with mites with these extended release um, oxalic acid strips I make. Um, a matter of fact, I just made a new batch this morning because I have a feeling, uh, you know, as I go through these production hives, I might need to add a couple more. They're very inexpensive to make once you get all of the ingredients. Okay, that's about a minute. Let them, and with this one, you release the lid, and there's a little catch there. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little plastic arm that kind of catches and lets them drain out. Just kind of shake them, get all of the, the bees out of there. Set them to the side. And then we'll do a check. 
One, two, three. four, five, it's less than 2%. Uh, because I use 300 Bs, three would be 1%, six would be 2%. So for the uh, peak of July, that's actually not bad. Now, can I get that down to zero? Perhaps I could do a vapor, get them down to zero and let these strips keep working. But the important thing to realize is, you know, for the first mite check I've done on that hive, uh, since the spring, I'm at five mites. Now here's back to that point I meant on having another mm -hmm. bucket. See, now that I've got the mites in here, I need to reuse my liquid. And I use a little sieve sponge here. Uh, and I just kind of pour it into the other bucket. And double check there's no mites in there. And then I can also recount in my sieve. And there's my five mites. So that was a good count. Most important thing is when you take a mite check, write it down because you will forget you will forget the date, how many mites. These are bees going back in here, nice and healthy. And then of course I live here near a pond, so I just give the fish these bees. And I'm ready for my next one. Now, that is how I do a mite check, find the queen, Find a good brood frame with some uh, captain open brood, shake them in here, get a half a cup of bees, which is about 300 bees. Go ahead and do your mic check. You gotta have less than two to 3%. I don't, whatever your number is, just manage it. You know, if that had been 18, okay, you know, 6% is too much in July because here in August, September, October, that'll go to 30 uh, if you're not careful because they reproduce at a very, very rapid rate. And if they're that high, that also means there's not any control going on. The fact they were at five means there's some con control going on. Okay, so that was the first hive. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. If I see anything different in the other hives or any of my other mite checks, I'll pull up another one. Okay, I'm back. On this second hive, it's just a little five frame, probably six or seven frames. So I'm actually, since we're here in August, I'm gonna actually go get two brood frames out of my resource hives on my Long Langstroth and boost this one up a little bit so she's got more bees uh, before the uh, fall flow comes here next month. Uh, I also realized that I didn't show you my mite counts, so you don't have to believe me or not. So while I'm shaking this one up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you before I throw them away. So those of you that think I might be kidding you, uh, have some proof to look at here. So I did put my gloves on. And for those of you that like to wear gloves, when you're working with hives with a lot of bees, you know, if I'm gonna do all this, I'm gonna get stung probably half a dozen times or more. Um, so I have chosen white gloves. Guess what? Bees don't go to white. Uh, if you put on those black thick neoprene gloves, they're gonna be attracted to your hands. Um, so black and dark colors are not the colors of gloves to use. These are available on Amazon. And the cool thing about these is they got a little bit of extra long arm. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link to the gloves in the description below. These are definitely my favorite. They're not real thick, so you do get stung through them occasionally, but they're white and you can kind of be a little bit quicker in the hive with these gloves than just barehanded, uh, which is what I'm gonna do today because it's getting hot out here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we got in this one. Um, Remember, percentages don't matter. Uh, you know, so this, the fact this is a six or seven frames of bees versus 10 in that last one doesn't matter. This is about percentages of the bees at hand. And once again, I pulled these bees off of a mixed open and closed uh, brood frame. Three. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do this on the camera. So I'm just gonna tilt it back and show you as best I can not knowing if this is gonna work. If this doesn't work, I'm sorry. I may try showing you the sieve, but there's three mites in there with a little bit of a uh, bee legs and stuff like that. Um, so that's even better, that's 1%. So the fact that I've got 1% in a weaker hive, uh, weaker meaning like it's a smaller hive. All right, no remnants in there, a little bit of a bee leg. Let me see if I can get this to you here, kind of mix everything up a little bit. I just say, I, I'm gonna have to count very closely, but I saw three. Oh yeah, there's one up here. There's one down here. There might even be two. But anyway, proof's in the pudding. Uh, all right, I just didn't wanna do a mic check without showing you what I was doing, so you didn't have to take my word for it. Okay, these bees go in the pond, 
and uh, I'll be right back if I see anything else interesting. All right, YouTube, just to tell you that uh, everything getting perfect, this first production hive, and I'm looking at it, the oxalic acid strips are worn out, and this one is totally infested. I'm over 30, I lost count, just to show you. This is what a bad mite count looks like. Um, not good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this guy with some uh, oxalic acid vapor after I put it back together. And uh, I will show you how I do that, but uh, that is not good news. So I'm just gonna, I mean, I, I'm, I just gotta say 30 plus. Uh, I counted to about 28, 29, I stopped counting. So it doesn't always work if you let your strip sit in there too long, because essentially the, the, se the secret is oxalic acid exposure uh, for a certain period of time. And with a strong, strong hive, they must have eaten out uh, most of that oxalic acid strip. So I'm gonna crack it down, see how many strips are left, put some new strips back in there, and then hit it with uh, vapor. That's how you handle it. And that's why we do the mite checks. Okay, as I'm breaking this hive down, you see, so I, from the top, it looked like I had a strip on there, but they've completely eaten that away. They could have eaten that away months ago. So there was essentially no oxalic acid being expressed to the hive. So that's what I was talking about, about them eating um, the chip, the uh, chipboard away. Let me see how this one is. Yeah, same thing. So essentially no strip. So at, at, at first glance on the top, it looked like I still had a strip in there, but effectively there was no more. So double deeps, get four more strips, maybe five. And uh, that's how we'll handle it. Okay, I'm back. I didn't mean for this to be a tutorial on oxalic acid vaporization. I have the old Verox 150 watt vaporizer, but instead of using a 12 volt battery, I went ahead and bought a 200 watt inverter on here, or LED driver, this is not an inverter. It just takes it to DC. Uh, and I put a little switch on here so I could turn it on and off. That's how I do this. Uh, and the other thing you need is when you use oxalic acid, you need to wear a vaporizer because you cannot ingest these fumes. So I won't be able to talk on the mic when I do it, but I just fill the little cap and I do it for two or three minutes until the vapors go down. I'll show you how I do it. Okay, it's been a few minutes. I've still got my breather on, but I usually wait till I see some vapors coming out. Um, so I just need to check to make sure it all burned up. And it did. Turn it off. And the last step is to rinse it off in a bucket of water. And I just got a bucket of water that's over here. Cool it off. That way it stops cooking. And look for any vapors. And if there's no vapors, you can go ahead and take your breather off. Okay, if you've never done that before, the breather's really important. Uh, don't take a big whiff of that. If you've done it a few hundred times, you'll learn how close to get to the, uh, the box, the vapors that you see. And oh, by the way, I put a little bit of bubble in here to close up the top so the vapor stayed inside the hive. So that's pretty much it. That's how I do OA vapor. Um, I'll keep checking the hives. Be right back. Okay, YouTube. I'm just gonna do a little voiceover to wrap this uh, mite check day up. Boy, it was hot out there. I uh, finished up those production hives. Those are my hives that are all the double deeps. 
And uh, much like that last image I just showed you, all of the double deeps that I basically haven't touched since the spring all had high mite loads. And all of the strips were gone out of the hives. So much like I surmised, the mite counts start to go up once the strips are chewed out. Um, in the past, I, I try to leave my production hives alone. Uh, what I didn't do this year is I didn't break open the double deeps when I did honey extraction. It was, um, yeah, I guess I was rushed or I didn't crack them open. That was the time I probably should have taken this peak that I'm now doing um, at the uh, early August time point. I should have done that in early June. That would have been the time to catch it. So um, I went ahead and put five strips, uh, four or five strips in each of those hives. I went ahead and did an oxalic acid vaporization treatment in each of those hives. Uh, I'll probably come back next week and just double check to make sure the knockdown went good. Um, if they're still in the 10, 10 range, I'll probably hit them one more time. Uh, but those strips will take care of, um, of the hives. One of the hives was actually missing a queen and it was pretty sparse looking in there. Um, and actually I may start to think that the queen that swarmed that I did that video on a few days ago, the tiny little ball of bees that swarmed with her might have actually been an abscond, uh, not a swarm from that hive right behind it, which I couldn't find the queen in today. So the only mystery is they made a new queen. Remember I showed you that uh, the, the marked queen they had killed and they had a new queen with her. So um, anyway, a little bit of a mystery may be solved with that because the uh, high mite loads can create absconding situations. Um, so I think I've taken care of it, but it is obviously a situation I usually pride myself that I don't let get this far. Uh, I left my production hives alone this year and I left them alone too long because uh, they chewed out those mite strips. Um, and that is the lesson is you got to keep that oxalic acid in there if you're using the extended release method for treatment. Otherwise, you've got to do what we did uh, this afternoon with the vapor treatments uh, and just schedule it several times a year, specifically in late summer when the mite loads just really do explode. And you really need these hives building up during the last flow here in Jacksonville versus continuing to weaken. So I'm going to make sure I, I feed them up, make sure they got uh, uh, good mite drop um, counts that are all done and um, we'll get them back on the right track. But that's the summary for today. Hopefully you enjoy this content. Let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, everybody.